Tristan Honda makes a dramatic return as your first opponent in the world circuit. He's got a couple new tricks up his sleeve and shows you that right off the bat with consecutive jabs after his eyebrow taunt. Dodge or block them. Also watch out for his uppercut, that sometimes he'll duck down and shimmy back and forth before finally throwing it. When he goes for his bonsai charge, he won't go back and forth across the ring like last time. He cuts it short and goes right for the kill. Time your body shot right and it'll knock him out. Soda Popinski was originally called Vodka Drunkinski in the arcade, but I guess to make the game more family friendly, they changed his character to a Russian that drinks so much soda, he actually gets intoxicated from it, if you read his drunken dialogue. He has a very slight delay in his uppercut, and it isn't really all that different in timing from his hooks, so dodging them shouldn't be a huge problem. Every now and then he'll throw a quick jab. Don't let the fact that he's a southpaw throw you off. If you run out of hearts, he'll shuffle his feet and throw a few jabs at a pretty weak specialty. Just counterattack and don't dodge too soon, you shouldn't have much trouble with this drunk. The second ball bull is a bit of a pain in the ass, because the only way you can knock him down is with star uppercuts or countering the bull charge. He'll give you plenty of chances to get stars though, usually when he does this stupid taunt. Just punch him when he does this for an easy star. He'll do this taunt every now and then, and when either of you get up after a knockdown. Be sure that his life meter is considerably low before throwing your star uppercut. Other than that, his attacks are pretty much the same as before with the exception of his bull charge. If you dodge it, he'll back up halfway up the ring and do the charge from there. Do whichever one you feel works best for you. A weird quirk about the second ball bull is that he always gets up at 9. Although, I did see my friend knock him out once. I swear to god, after years of playing this game, I've never knocked out the second ball bull, or even heard it was possible. I don't know how the hell he did it, but I did see it happen. Anyway, on to the second Don Flamenco. He's learned to be pretty damn annoying. He'll throw jabs and hooks this time, both of which are a bit different to time you dodge. He doesn't give you nearly as many counter shots to his uppercut. His defense is much stronger and he takes his time, so this fight can drag on for a while. Before throwing his uppercut, He'll do his taunt like before, only this time he won't always throw it right after blocking your shot. His mission in this fight is to wear you out, so he'll taunt and block to drain your hearts. Just let your hearts pass and dodge his hooks that he'll throw when you're winded. Then get right back in his face and keep the aggressive approach until you TKO. Aside from Tyson, Mr. Sandman was the guy I was stuck on for the longest amount of time. His routine is pretty difficult to figure out in trial and error. He's the first fighter to demonstrate fast footwork, which can give you an anxiety attack when defending yourself. He'll start off with quick jabs after circling his fists, much like his palace swap, Ball Bull, only he's much quicker. Then he'll start throwing hooks, which you can counter with one face shot and three body blows. To make things easier, instead of waiting for the hooks, throw a shot to the face which he'll dodge and immediately throw his hook. This process makes it much easier to time since you'll know exactly when his hooks are coming. Eventually, he'll just block your punches and not throw his hooks, and that's when you know his three uppercuts are coming. This one always bothered me back in the day because I was always in the habit of dodging to the right side, which would never work against Mr. Sandman. You have to dodge to the left to get away from his uppercuts. After dodging all three, punch him in the head once and you can follow it up with over 15 body shots. Most of the time, this should knock him down. Repeat this strategy until he's all done. When Mr. Sandman beats you, his taunt is possibly the most racist thing I've ever seen in a video game. <laughs> I'm surprised civil rights activists didn't pick up on this one. I mean, that was pretty bad. Super Macho Man is the world heavyweight champion, and although he's supposed to be a 27-year-old narcissist, he looks like he's in his 50s, with the gray hair and receding hairline. Then he shakes his man boobs right before the fight, a very sickening display. And this guy is wrapped up in his good looks? I mean, just look at him, he's one of the goofiest looking motherfuckers in the game, and that's saying a lot. As far as fighting him goes, he's really not as hard as Mr. Sandman. His hooks are slow and his uppercuts are fast, which can really throw off your timing. He also has two variations to his specialty, the tornado punch. He'll either stand there and give you one crazy tornado shot, or wind up and give you several in a row. The consecutive punches can range between 3, 5, or 7 respectively. When he does these, just keep dodging, even after his last shot. Don't guess on the number of punches he's going to throw, because you may guess wrong. After his final tornado shot, he'll give you plenty of time to counter. It's possible to knock Super Macho Man out in the second round, but I don't know how it's done exactly. All I know is that you can't take any hits. If you knock him down, you'll notice... Oh my god, he's got camel toe. What the fuck? Not only does he have man boobs and a strong physique, but he's got a mangina as well. What kind of testosterone pills is this freak taking? He is from Hollywood, so he does have his sources. 
And yes, since he's a pallet swap, Soto Popinski has camel toe too. Gross. After winning, you'll be presented with a trophy that's bigger than you are and a newspaper article proclaiming you the World Heavyweight Champion in a very bad Japanese to English translation. You'll also get a pass key that'll take you to Super Macho Man and not Mike Tyson. But there is a key to get to Tyson. In case you're wondering, here it is. And now for the dream fight, Mike Tyson. I don't understand the recurring theme of dreams in this game. It's the same man going off about putting you to sleep and waking you up, etc. And here's a dream fight. I'll tell you, I really hope for little Mac's sake that he doesn't wake up after all this. That would be a real kick in the nuts. Anyway, Tyson is probably just as hard in this game as he is in real life at this stage of his career. If you lose to him, you retire automatically, even if you're undefeated at this point. It's game over. So the Tyson passkey should come in handy. For the first minute and a half, he'll throw uppercuts, which will send you to the canvas in one shot. Dodge, take two headshots, and repeat the process. You can't afford any knockdowns, so be careful. The second half of the round sees him winking before taking a straight shot. Dodge right as he winks and take two more headshots. This will go on for the rest of the round, and you should be able to knock him down once in the first round. In round two, we'll start off with about eight quick jabs. Block them, even if it means losing your hearts. His uppercuts aren't as deadly at this point, but they'll still do significant damage. The good news is that you can get about six headshots in after countering them. He'll still do his wink shots as well, so watch his movements carefully. If there's a delay, odds are he's going to be going for the uppercuts. When he does the double blinking, punch him in the head for a star, then block his consecutive straights. If you can, try to leave one speck of health on his meter and don't attack him until the round is over. You'll have a head start to TKOing him in round three with a one punch quick knockdown. So you have essentially the entire round to knock him down twice. He's really pissed now. He'll alternate between wink shots, uppercuts, and quick jabs that you won't see coming. He basically realizes you're winning and starts throwing the kitchen sink at you. Keep in mind that you can win by decision, so if you've knocked him down several times and you've only been knocked down once on none, then you can stay conservative and not worry about the star uppercuts and concentrate on dodging. But if you time everything correctly, you can TKO him for the more satisfying victory. After the fight, Tyson congratulates you on your victory, complimenting your finger speed. Then we get a rundown of the cast of characters, minus Mike Tyson. So there you have it, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. It'll probably go down in history as one of the most enduring NES games of all time. And what's made it age so well is the superb gameplay. It's not a boxing simulation in the least. That would play like crap on the NES today. It's cartoony characters and arcade style is what made this game stand out and work so well even to this day. For anyone who hasn't played it or missed out on it, I highly recommend it. Although the emulated versions will give you some trouble in the latter stages of the game in terms of timing. If you can get your hands on the original cartridge, then go for it. This game is a gem. So that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time. Thank you.